Well, we're in the book of Acts today. So as you have turned there, let me once again say that it's just a delight to, to see all of you. And if you're visiting with us for the very first time, please give me, give us an opportunity just to, to greet you and, and to welcome you. We've got a special gift for you, Kathy, there in the front. Um, we would just love to make that connection with you. And if you're visiting with us online today, maybe this is your first service that you've kind of checked in on. We're delighted to have you, whether you live here in the area or out of city or out of state. We're just so happy that you've chosen to uh, worship the Lord and to receive his word. So we're going to be starting a new series today. And as I uh, get my iPad to work here for a second. Um, and, and the book of Acts is where we're going to be looking at. There is a word or there is a theme that kind of has been granted and given to me as we look at this the next many weeks. It's a word that we need to be encouraged with. It's a word that we need to be charged with and challenged with and blessed with. It's a simple word, but in the light of what we are seeing today, in the light of things that are slowing down or in light of the things that have had to be canceled and stopped, we've had so many of our camps, really most all of our camps, whether kids and youth, we've had seniors camp, camp canceled and, and stopped because of what we're facing in not only our nation, but in the world. It's something that uh, we need to hear about what we're involved with and what we're connected to. You and I are a part of his church. And uh, the word that we want to look at as we begin today is the word unstoppable. I want everybody to say that together with me. Ready? One, two, three. Unstoppable. An unstoppable measure. When we think about what that means, and today we're going to be looking at the church, but it simply is defined as that which cannot be stopped. It can't be surpassed. It's unbeatable. It's uncontainable. It's uncontrollable. It's impossible or it's incapable of stopping. It's an unstoppable church you and I are a part of, even in the midst of pandemic, even in the midst of chaotic culture that we might be involved in. It is his church that is unstoppable and it moves forward. He said, uh, the gates of hell will not even prevail against it. Why? Because I will do something with my church. Everybody together say, it. I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When you think of things that are unstoppable, things that move on and, and, and carry on, uh, I kind of searched through that simple Google search. And so from the culture or the world's perspective, here was a freelance writer that gave us her top 10 list of unstoppable things. Again, not spiritual, just a cultural perspective. Number 10, zoysia grass. For me, I would say weeds, right, Cameron? Weeds, they're unstoppable no matter how many times you pull it. Number nine, catalogs. Number eight, inflatable Christmas decorations. Number seven, pins. Number six, dill pickles. It's always on the plate. It's always garnish. Five, pop culture. Four, the clapper. Three, chia pets. Two, Real estate developers with an unlimited line of credit. And number one, depending on where you're at in life, you might understand this from her perspective, birthdays. They're unstoppable. Seems like you're always wanting to get to that special birthday when you're younger. And then there reaches a point when you kind of want them to just stop, but they keep rolling through and they just keep rolling along. What are some of those teams, sports teams, that you would look at and remember as the unstoppable force? They always refer back to every NFL season to the what? 1972 Miami Dolphins with the only 17-0 record and Super Bowl win. 
They were unstoppable. Nobody could stop them. 2007, New, in New England Patriots football team went throughout the regular season undefeated 18 and 0. You think about this streak, ladies, you probably remember the University of Connecticut Huskies women's basketball team from 2008 to 2010, 90 straight games that they won. Unstoppable. They were a force to be reckoned with. Randy, you'll like this. Alabama tied football championship 2009. And uh, I even brought this one out, 2016 Golden State Warriors NBA team with the best ever regular season NBA record of 73 and 9. These particular teams would be considered unstoppable. Listening in the car to the songs on the radio, Joy FM, there was a new song, and I would encourage you to listen to it and to find it, even find it in the video format. Torin Wells released a new song entitled Famous Four, and I heard the word unstoppable as I was planning for the series and for the message. Some of the lyrics that are of this really incredible song are this, make way through the waters, walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life, and do what you were famous for, what you are famous for. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think. Lord, you will never fail. Your word, excuse me, your name is powerful and your words unstoppable. All things are possible in you. Can you say amen to that? All things are impossible in his word and his kingdom and his church is unstoppable. So in light of the things that we might feel and see of things around us and the slowdown and uh, you know, the, the quarantine, the pandemic, I, I, I want to remind you, God wants to share with you today about his unstoppable kingdom, the unstoppable church. In Acts 1-1, look at it together. We're not going to read from verse 1 to 11, though we'll be pulling things out of that. And also chapter 2, 3, 4, many of the chapters we'll be looking at today. But look at just verse 1. There's one word that I want you to focus on and just to think about for a moment. And in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. One word I want you to look at is the word began. You see, Jesus began a good work. Jesus began this tremendous march and this kingdom move, but it's still ongoing. You know what? It's ongoing through you and I, the church. It's going through the body of Christ. It's not finished. The work hasn't stopped. Jesus hasn't come back to take his church home. There's still work to be done. And I want you to know that you and I are a part of this unstoppable church. The truth is that no matter what the world believes and no matter how difficult things are, we belong to his unstoppable church. Churches will come, churches will go, pastors will come, pastors will go, churches will be built, churches even sometimes will be torn down, but the church, the body of Christ, the family of believers who are in step with the Spirit and following Jesus, there's no stopping this group of people. The reason is because it's not about us. It's not we are the creative ones, the special ones, the wonderful ones, but it's because God who controls the history of the world has provided the church, you and me, with everything we need, everything we need to accomplish his will, design, and his purpose. So there are some tools or there are some elements to this unstoppable church that we need to be reminded of today. And we want to look at that quickly. If you would bow your heads, your hearts, let's ask God to speak to us today. Father, we give you the thanks and we give you the praise for all 
that, Lord, you're doing in us. Lord, you began a good work, and, Lord, you're going to finish it. You're going to finish it, Lord, through willing members, Lord, excited members, people that, Lord, want to honor you and honor your word and build, Lord, up the body, the kingdom of God. So I pray, Lord, as we read again from the words in Acts, I pray that they would... Lord, be burned upon our hearts, and Lord, let us never forget that we're a part of an unstoppable church. We give you the thanks and the praise as we rely upon you right now in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, amen. Look him in the eye and say, amen. Let's receive the word of God together. Number one, as we think about the things that are necessary or really important about this unstoppable church, and it's in the book of Acts. You cannot extract it. You cannot remove it. You cannot separate this. The first thing that we see is prayer. Write it down. Let's take some notes together. Throughout the book of Acts, it's an undeniable and it's a distinct tool. It's a weapon against the kingdom of darkness, and it's a tool for the kingdom of light. It was an integral part. You read from chapter 1 all the way to the end how prayer was vital. It was mentioned. It was necessary. Why? It was key to his unstoppable church. No one could stop what God started and how that it moved and how lives were changed and and rearranged and transformed because of God's might and power. Verse number 14, look at it. They all joined together constantly in prayer. The early church was about prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. They're joining together. They are praying together. They're utilizing the tool of prayer in the unstoppable church, and we must understand that one is equal to the other. You don't have an unstoppable church without the realm and the power of prayer. They prayed during a transition. Look at verse number 24, when it went from Judas and it went looking for a new leader, Matthias was chosen. They prayed for the heavenly outpouring, the power of the Holy Spirit to equip them to do the work of building God's church. They prayed for the beginning and during the early church meetings, chapter 2 and verse number 42. When they gathered, they prayed. When they gathered, they worshiped, they prayed, they shared together, and uh, they sought God. God was going to lead and direct them. Look at chapter 3. I know I'm moving just a little bit along the book, but if you look at chapter 3, it was something regular that they did. There was something in their, in their walk, their discipline. There was something that was a, a part of the regularity. And what was that? Well, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time, everybody said together, of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. It was noted. Why was it noted? It was necessary. It was needed. It was important. It was vital. The unstoppable church was a church that prayed to pray for the healing of the sick. They prayed for the working of miracles. They prayed for a crippled beggar in verse 6 of chapter 3. On and on again, prayer was key to the unstoppable church, the linkage, the connection between them and God. In the last three years, we have prayed sincerely. And every encounter and every difficulty along the building expansion campaign, there's times we didn't know what to do. We're like, what do we do here? We've not been this way before, so we pray and we pray, we seek the Lord, and he gives an answer. There's a release. There's something that happens. Those that serve with me definitely will recognize the prayer that was needed. Prayer was needed at the start of a pandemic. Prayer is going to be needed all the way through. The changes 
all the different things that have had to happen. We've got to seek God and we've got to pray because we're a part of his unstoppable church. You know what? It would be really cool if we had one of those counters, you know, counters for different things that are done. Wouldn't it have been amazing to see a counter for all the prayers prayed at O'Fallon Assembly of God ever since its inception day, 1955? 65 years. Wow. You and I would be blown away with the thousands upon thousands of prayer that have been prayed through the ministry of O'Fallon Assembly of God at the four different locations here since 1999. But I also shudder to think of what would not have happened had the people of God not prayed. What would not have happened? Doors would not have opened. This property would have been given to somebody else. But I believe God's people were praying, leaders were praying, and a prime piece of property right here at the gateway to our community opened up, and it was because of prayer. So the unstoppable church is not capable of stopping even in 2020. Do I get an amen? It can't stop. I mean, even if an economic crisis would blow up, terrible weather storm, tornado would come rolling through our area. Whatever would come, O'Fallon Assembly would move on because it's a part of God's unstoppable church. You and I are the church. We know it's not the building. We are the people of God that must be the prayer warriors of God. Next Sunday night, we're going to be doing just that. Join me, prayer on the lawn, as we pray prayers that only God can hear and respond to and listen to. Let's pray powerful and mighty prayers. Number two is this next beautiful tool that I know you're very aware of. But how desperately we need power. Power is, again, the tool given for his unstoppable church. And it's not personal power. No matter how awesome you think or we think we might be, it's not about personal power. It's about God's power, the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, the work of the church was never meant to be in accomplished in the strength of human flesh. It was not meant to be accomplished with our wisdom, our ingenuity. It was meant to be accomplished in the overwhelming, overwhelming power of the Holy Ghost. Measure power that equipped the early church that we see it turning cities upside down and right side up, literally, wherever the people of God went, and as the church of God moved from place to place and from city to city, they literally turned it upside down because they were instructed, don't leave. Don't leave here unless you're filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit. You're going to need this power in order to do what I have called you to do. Right in the middle of his instruction, look at chapter 1, verse 8. Everybody look at that verse real quick. Right in the middle of his instruction to be witnesses is a promise to give us the resource in order to do the job. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. Power to be witnesses. Where? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Here and there. Power of the Holy Spirit that equips us and that comes upon us and dwells within us to live through us to do his bidding and to do his will. It's an unstoppable church. Now, if we make ourselves available and open to him, he will use us and he will grant us this power to do those incredible and amazing things. But here's the caveat. We have got to put our agendas aside and let him set the agenda for the future and for that of his church. 
Let's turn our attention to Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. Some of these verses are going to be so familiar. I'm going to link one verse to our most recent series, Infinitely More, because you, you can't, again, you can't, you can't remove that from what we are looking at today. 3, 16 and 17, if you're there, say, I'm there. If not, say, hold up, I'm getting there. Ephesians 3, 16, 17, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with, here it is, power, power through what? Through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now remember where we were just a few weeks ago, and we did seven weeks of infinitely more. Let me remind you with 320. Now, all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. It's through his mighty power, the Holy Spirit within us, that's going to accomplish those unlimited, infinitely more measures. It's all available, and he wants us to tap in to this. Why do some churches cease? Why do some churches stop? Why do some churches close? Well, could it be that they fail to tap into the power that God meant for them to use and follow the wisdom and direction that he provided for them. It's an unstoppable measure with unlimited resource, and it's the power of the Holy Spirit that he wants us to use for the glory of God. Number three is this. I think about people, precious people, individual people. God's in charge of his church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Again, it's an unstoppable church. Means that the church lives in the firm assurance that we have the power and direction to bring down, to even break down the doors of hell. When Jesus ascended into heaven, it was with the promise that he wouldn't leave us on our own. Friends, you and I today, in this hour in which we live, we live through the Spirit's power we have prayer. We have power. And thank God for people. Thank God for the church, which is people. During the three and a half months or so when we were doing online services and there was a six-member crew, we'd gather together and we'd do our, our best to connect with all of you, and we're doing even our best to connect with those that are not able to be with us in house today. We would look at a camera. We would try to learn how to minister to a camera, to an inanimate object, knowing that there were people that were in their homes, people that were on their couches, people that were at their dining table, listening to the message, listening and being involved in worship. Where would we be without people? Turn around and just look. Give somebody a smile. Take your mask off for just a second. Give somebody a smile. They can't see a smile. And if you got the mask on, and I, I think it's going to be okay for three seconds if you give somebody a smile, okay? It's good for the members, for the people of the body of Christ that we share together, that we serve together. And God brings people into his house. It's beautiful to see. It's beautiful to witness. And I'm grateful that the church is not incumbent. It doesn't rest upon one person. Can somebody say amen? amen? Oh, my goodness. If it just rested upon one person, let's just say if it rested on you, wow, all the pressure and all the weight would be on you. If it rested on me, oh, my goodness, I couldn't bear it. But it's not just one person. God brings people together. He engrafts them into the beautiful part of the vine, his church. And uh, there are those uh, that come and there are those that go. And you sometimes wonder in this transition as 
we had a staff member leave back in December. And so how, what, how are we going to do this? Back nine years ago, when you were at that of a pastoral transition, what's going to happen? What's going to take place? And in the body of Christ and in the design that he has, he he works. It's kind of like his uh, amazing board up on heaven, and he knows how to lead, guide, direct, and move for the advancement and the equipping and for the people necessary in his church. It was never meant to just rest on one individual or on the back of one person, but God uses people people that he brings in, people that he will allow us to win and love and to see saved and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, baptized in water. It's kind of neat when different people don't know how we work within our platform and what we do. Connor was asking me, so what's back here, Pastor? Because he sees something's here. Is that? I said, Connor, that's our baptistry. Oh, cool. You take these up, and man, we're going to be able to baptize people in water and see them be a part of declaring their allegiance and loyalty to Jesus Christ. We see people go through membership class. We see people come on leadership board teams. We see people rotate off of how is God going to work in the transition of some of the roles and responsibilities, but that's his bidding and his doing as we are faithful to watch, faithful to pray, faithful to, to be connected and committed. It's one of the things that was a concern to your pastor during this pandemic when I couldn't see the members of our church and I had to trust that we were all still yet linked together by that of either Facebook or the website. Linked together, there's a commitment there. There's a heart there. There's a passion there. We're still giving. We're still going. We're still doing. It's just maybe it looked just a little different. It takes people that God has, that God uses. It's all about what the church is, and the church is unstoppable. Look there in the beginning of Acts, and whenever Judas exploded, and you're going to say, yeah, literally, Judas exploded, his bowels gushed out. You think about that, you read it, it's in there, and you say, how are they going to take place to fill that sacred position. Well, the lot fell to Matthias, and Matthias, a beautiful man of God, jumped in and uh, fit the bill for what God wanted to do. All the people in the body of Christ are ordained, and listen to me, look, 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 are ordained and assigned by God to serve with their gifts and with their willingness and with their heart in the midst of God's unstoppable church. Lastly, I want us to look at this other beautiful thought of preaching. Preaching, sometimes you just see, wow, it's the foolishness of preaching, but it is the power of God that can reach at a person's heart, the strings of their life, as God uses his word, uses his word, declares his word, the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ. It's the proclamation of the kingdom message. Jesus lives, Jesus moves, and Jesus saves. Do I hear an amen? He still saves. He still moves. He still moves in times when we're trying to figure things out. We understand maybe a little less than we would like to, a little bit less handle on planning. For me, as a planner, it's been difficult not to have a plan. And we're just kind of going from week to week because, well, that has been changed and that's been changed. Well, we, 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 we can't really do that, so we have to kind of do this. We understand that God has his plan. He has his purpose. And all I have to do is read the book of Acts as a testimony and an evidence that the preaching of the cross, the power of the blood, the anointing of the Spirit changes lives. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, and, and what happened? 3,000 lives 
were transformed. You follow that up and you go a little bit farther and what happens? Well, Peter heals the crippled beggar and the number swells. You read it to 5,000 transformed lives. Peter and John preached to the Sanhedrin and all of those members heard the gospel and were impacted with the seed of the kingdom of God. Turn to chapter 5 in your Bibles, verse number 14. The apostles are using, again, this power of the Spirit to heal many people. And the Bible says right here in Acts 5, 14, nevertheless, I love that word, no matter what's going on, nevertheless, more and more men and women, more and more people believed in the Lord and were added to their number. See, the preaching of the good news doesn't come without persecution. It doesn't come without Opposition. It doesn't come without adversity. It doesn't come without even an attack. You read Acts again and look at the many different ways that things were coming against the church and things were opposing the church and the persecution of that first church was so great. And yet I find that they couldn't stop God's church from moving forward from city to city, from home to home, from place to place. Couldn't be stopped even with stoning. Couldn't be stopped with even jailing. We'll shut him up. Let's just put him in the jail cell. Well, even in the jail cell, the word of God went from person to person and from, from, from worker to worker and from jailer to jailer and from the family even of the jailer. It just traveled seizing or the threat of death, you read, you will find the church grew time and time and time again. Chapter 6, let's look at chapter 6, just pulling a couple of verses for you to see the preaching of the Word of God and what happens. Chapter 6, verse number 7. All right, they just chose seven servants, seven seven people to, to serve Uh, In in verse 7, so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. And a large number of priests even became obedient to the faith. People were still coming to know Jesus even in a time of adversity, opposition, or attack. Go to chapter 8. You got to see this. Here it is. I want you to know that I don't see what we're going through literally as persecution. I see it going through its inconvenience and it's uncomfortable and it's different, but you can't equate COVID. You can't equate that with what the early church had to face. Chapter 8, verse 1, read it with me. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem and all except the apostles, they were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He dragged off men and women and put them in prison. That we have not seen. Persecution against the church. Great persecution. But look at verse number four. Keep going, all right? Keep going. Verse number four. Those who had been scattered through the persecution, what did they do? They whined and they whined and they say, this shouldn't happen. I'm a child of God. I just can't believe it's happening to me. You see teardrops from verse number four? No, you see bold declaration of a daring, courageous faith. Uh, They they scattered and they did what? Everybody say it together. They preached the word. Say it with me. They preached the word. Not their opinion, not their thought. They preached the word wherever they went. And so Philip went down to a city in Samaria, and what did he do? Let me proclaim Jesus there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said, because it's the words of the kingdom. With shrieks and evil spirits came out of many, and many uh, paralytics and cripples were healed. And look at verse number 8. Because of the persecution and because of the scattering and because of the seed of the word of God, say together, verse 8, there was great joy 
in the city. Yeah, there's going to be some inconveniences, and come on, there's going to be some setbacks, and yeah, there's going to be some difficulty, but we are a part of his unstoppable church. Jesus is our king. Do I hear an amen? We are his subjects. We are followers and disciples of Jesus, and there's nothing that Satan can do to stop his church because his church is marching on. 1972 Miami Dolphins, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet because God's house and God's work is a, a mighty spiritual machine. God has his hand upon it. You and I are a part of it. He's gifted us. He's given us uh, different abilities and different things. And it's not to say, look at me. <laughs> Don't I have it all together? No, we really don't, but he does. He does, and he gives the tools and the measures and the power and the anointing, the things that we need to move forward in his strength to accomplish his will. We're a part of an unstoppable church. So musicians come to find their place. Remember these four thoughts as we share the first part of unstoppable today we're part of this church unstoppable friends it's all about prayer we can't be an unstoppable church and not pray it just it just can't happen you've got to pray and i implore you whenever you see a prayer meeting don't say i can't make it say i gotta get there i gotta be a part of that part of the powerful prayers that we pray i'm thankful for my spiritual fathers that prayed way before i ever got here I'm glad that they prayed when they all were at Lincoln. What are we going to do? God gave direction. God opened up. Church prayed. Things happened. Uh, and now I get to be a part, infused in to the wonderful work of the kingdom of God. With your heads bowed, your eyes closed, think about prayer. Think about the power of the Holy Spirit. But think about people, wonderful, precious, godly people. Think about the message of hope. Think about speaking about what Jesus can do in hearts and in lives, that Jesus can make a difference and that Jesus can make a way. You belong to an unstoppable church if you've made Christ Jesus the Lord of your life. If he's Savior, if you're following him today, then friends, uh, you understand what has been spoken. There's nothing that can stop his church. But maybe you are not part of that church because you haven't submitted and yielded and surrendered your heart to Jesus Christ. The Bible says you must be born again. Are you born again? Are you ready to be raptured and ready for heaven, brought up to the gate and brought up to the, to the counter and they'll look and say, but why should I let you in? Angels will be there. Peter and John will be there. Paul will be there. And there's only one answer that's going to work at that time. It's because I gave my heart to Jesus. I've asked him to be my savior and Lord. I followed him. I served him. I was a part of that unstoppable church on earth. And I can't wait to enter into my eternal reward. It happens through a decision. And right now, I'm speaking to everybody here in the house, as well as everybody that's watching online, are you a part of his unstoppable church? Are you ready to allow, allow Jesus to be Savior and Lord and Master and Redeemer? Are you ready? To allow him to take control of your life and lead you on. Church words for you. Are you ready to be involved in what's necessary for his unstoppable, unstoppable church to continue? You're ready to be a part of the prayer force and the prayer team and the prayer athons and the prayer measures and the prayer uh, lists. Are you ready to engage with the power of the Holy Spirit to serve side by side of other precious people and to declare, thus saith the Lord. It's his word that makes a difference. It's not your opinion. It's not my decision. It's God's word. So let's be people of the word. Let's be people of prayer. Let's be people of the spirit. 
and let's do what he wants us to do. I want us all to stand all around the sanctuary. If you're at home, I'm going to even ask you to stand as well. There's something about standing in the presence of God. We're about ready to worship with our last song, but right now I'm going to lead somebody to know who Jesus is. I want to lead somebody to say yes to Jesus because that's what it's all about, seeing sins forgiven, your heart made pure. He takes the old away and he gives everything brand spanking new. That's what Jesus does. If you need a Savior because you're a sinner, let me point you to Jesus. Bow your heads, close your eyes. First of all, Christians, you pray with me because there's somebody here that wants to be introduced to who Jesus is. Wonderful, mighty, awesome, went to the cross with you on his mind. Wanted to make a way where previously there was not a way. Say this together, all church, everybody say, Jesus, I need you in my life. I've learned that I cannot go another step without you giving me the lead. I surrender my heart. I yield it to you. Wash me with your precious blood. Cleanse me, forgive me, and prepare me for this amazing journey that is ahead of me. I decide right now to follow Jesus. Would you just lift up your hands all over this place? You might have prayed that prayer today. You're a new follower. You're a new disciple. I'd love to hear about your decision, but lift that up and say, Jesus, uh, lead me, guide me, direct me. I know that I'm a part of something awesome now. It's an unstoppable church. Devil, you can't stop us. You can't slow us down. Things will look differently. Yes, but the word of God goes forward. The people of God will shine like lights in the darkness. And we are his servants to do his bidding, whatever he calls with whatever he shares. I want you to worship the Lord with this last song.